Fox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Cowan podcast. Going back to the, the, the ear thing that you mentioned and having a keen ear for what's right, you know, having your feet de- deeply rooted in, in jungle at its early stages. Like you were saying before then, there was the Acid House thing and you were quick to pick up on particular new records that were coming through its time. You were also really entrenched in the sound system culture as well, right? Oh, man. It's a podcast in if, itself, right? <laughs> if I didn't do this, if like come through the sound system culture I don't think I'd be here right now and I wouldn't be the person that made me who I am you get what I'm saying and uh, I'm so grateful and give thanks for those years of growing up in Gloucester where I come from Gloucester a small town outside Bristol and like now what like now you're a young youth or whatever you either want to DJ or you want to make rap or whatever but back then Everybody wanted to be part of a, um, a, a sound system or, you know, be part of a collective of a sound system. And that was the culture back then, you get what I'm saying, you know? And so um, in Gloucester, we had all these sounds, different sounds, and everybody was affiliated with a different sound. And How so, many sounds did you have in Gloucester? I mean, Gloucester's reasonably small. Come oh, man, yeah, but back then it was just like, what else was there to do yeah, but, yeah. but build a sound system, you get what I'm saying? Oh, God, and so every, that. so we all did that. And we had, lo- we had quite, you know what I mean? We had, well, well, I'd say there was about six proper sound systems that was established and of course we were the number ones you get what i'm saying you know all the one come on right we only have number ones on the podcast what do you want right? from me huh? challenger sound system right we were the number ones and that's where i kind of got my my um learning about music and everything because like you know if you know about the sound system culture you have the operator mm-hmm. who like mixes down the music and all that like, you get what i'm saying because usually when you put on the music now it's, it's you just have the treble and then when the when the drop comes in or whatever you got to, uh, boom you drop the bass and all that and you mix it oh, down and all that God, right that sounds so, amazing right so you got the operator yeah. and then you got the mc but back then we used to call them toasters yeah they weren't called MC, you know, that word wasn't even about them. They were called DJs before that, weren't they? they were no, they were toasters. 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 So you have, oh. you have the uh, MC would be called a toaster, and then you'd have the selector, which was my job. So you'd have, like, the selector, you used to have a big record box, like, big, like a wardrobe, you get what I'm saying? Oh. And it had lots of little um, sections in it, you get what I'm saying? For seven inches and 12 inches. Laying down and, flat kind and of acetates. thing. Acetates. And it was big, like a wardrobe, you get what I'm saying? Full of our tunes and all that, right? And so that was my job, like, when we used to go out, I used to be the selector, so I would have to read the crowd and, like, put the record on the arm or give the record to the selector. And the selector would just put it on, put on the needle, and then, you know what I mean? And then you have the MC and all that, just like, eh, oh, whatever. So you get God. what I'm saying? And then you'd have all the, the rest of the crew, the sound man, them or whatever, to help you string up and carry the boxes because you're talking big wardrobe yeah, boxes yeah. and going up council <coughs> estates. So how many or, of you were in total, like, as in the team? Just, well, you know, it, 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 yeah, you know, <coughs> you'd have like, you'd have your main core of, of um, sound man, them, and then you'd have your, your box man, them, because you'd always have people, just like as a DJ, you always get People want to call up and oh Brian, can I get get me on the guest list? Or well, back then, if you want to get on the guest list, <laughs> right? If you want to get on the guest Here's list, your box, get in right, there. You carry two <coughs> boxes or whatever you get. What saying so, you had your crew and all them things, and they would like you know we'd have a big van and you travel all up and down the country, up and down to different countries, and we all sit in the back of the van with all the boxes just like Ooh. moving around and all <laughs> that shit. You get what I'm saying? Because there's only like two seats in the front with the driver, so everybody's in the back. So, you know, you're going places, hard you're going places like Gloucester to London and on the mall where uh, and the box of my fall over and I'm moving all them things and we're there in the back. I smoke weed and I drink. and But, it, I mean, you ask someone to do that now, they look at you like you're crazy, crazy yeah. or whatever. But it was fun to oh, be in the back of the van just, because you're part of it. You, you know yeah. what I mean? You're like, oh, just to be with that sound, yeah. you do that stuff. You get what I'm saying? You don't care. You didn't think about it. Well, I know this stuff exists still, but Brian, man, I want it back. Oh, man, yeah. It was, it was great it times. Amazing. It was It was, it was. You know what I mean? I mean, at the time, I ain't going to lie. It, you know, there was times when, like, especially when the dance finished, and like, you know, four o'clock in the morning. Dusty. And you're, and you're playing in some, yeah. some 
top of the estate. What did it look like? Explain that. Explain what did it look like when it when it lights were on and everyone's there. What did it look like? Picture it first. What did it look like? Well, it, what it looked like, it, the first thing you would think of is where's all the sound boy then? Because, hey, man would be trips in gal and going off with gal or whatever, or checking gal mm. or whatever. And you have to string down the sound system. Yeah. Just like, you know what I mean? That's a, a long process yeah, yeah, because, yeah. You, you know, all the boxes are wired up to the amplifier yeah. and the all around the club and all them things. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, four o'clock when everybody's mashed up now. Yeah. You got to get all the troops together and you got to string down the sound. And this time you're you're half light now because half of the crew's gone, yeah. and so you gotta carry all these boxes down. Yeah, all the ones that went in for free, you're now not here. <laughs> yeah, you, like, where's everybody gone? You gotta carry these boxes back down into the van, mm. and then you gotta slug it back all the way to where you come from or whatever. Mm. So you know, at the time, oh, but, but you just did it. You get what I'm saying? It was just it was just what you did, and like my job as well was like coming to London, and and buying records, you know, I used to go to Brixton Market, you know, because that was just like the only place I knew, so I used to come to Brixton Market, and there was a guy called George, China George, and he used to have a store down there, and I used to buy all the little pre-releases off him, buy pre-releases, and then, like, I used to... um, Yeah, that's crazy. I used to link up with um, Frontline Sound System, there's a guy called Natty from from Frontline Sound System, and and he used to take me to um, this cutting studio over in North London, I think it was a guy called Terry used to run it. Wow, years I forgot the name of it. It was an old white guy. What was the name of the cutting place? Oh, I can't remember, man. Wow. But this was like. What about in Tottenham or somewhere? It was just not. You know what? It was right I'm, out there. I'm coming from Gloucester, London. Yeah, um, you Gloucester. <laughs> so I'm just in London, yeah. big yeah. London. So yeah, yeah. you're asking me areas. Yeah, yeah, I just yeah, yeah. no idea. I just know that I used to meet this guy and he would take me to this studio and it was this old white man in there and there'd be enough yardies in there just sitting down waiting to get their wow. dog plates cut or whatever, sitting there with their beaver hats or whatever. Amazing. And you know what I mean? I used to link up front line from Natty. And he used to cut me a few plates, whatever. Them times you have to pay, you know, like how um, DJ producers now, I'd have a tune and I'd just give it to a groove or I'd give it to Randall or whatever. But back then, we had to pay for it, you yeah, know. Yeah, it was yeah. like almost like, God knows, it was a lot of money for dub plates. It's unthinkable. Because th- it was specials, yeah. you get yeah. what I'm saying? And You'd talk to, it out yourself just yeah, to get it to him. Yeah, and then yeah. they used to put your name in it or somewhere like that. Like, yeah, this one, yeah. This one, you yeah, to challenge your sound system, mm. and they would put things like dissing your rival. Or if yeah. you you got a rival that yeah. you're gonna play, would you get what I'm saying? It would be talking about their mom or their wife or whatever, <laughs> all kind of things in there, just to kind of get the crowd on your yeah. side or whatever. Be really personal, and um, yeah, and then we used to do these things called rewinding the tunes as well, where he used to do this thing and all kind of effects and stuff. So you know, those were early dub plate days and. That was a good learning lesson for me because that is that carved me as a DJ, just yeah. like the sound system thing. If you listen to me now, our DJ, Brian G, the DJ, the jungle DJ, the drum and bass DJ, I've taken all that those vibes yeah. of sound system yeah. into what our DJ now, 100%. and when I'm DJing, I'm still thinking like a sound boy. You mm. get what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I'm, but I'm not clashing with DJs now. Whereas before we'd be clashing with sound, I'm clashing with the crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, you know, I'm driving coming, the the sound in. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm coming out to hurt the crowd in a nice way, not hurt you, just like. Mm. But I'm coming to like lick off your head, mm. just like <laughs> I'll be coming to lick off the sound system's head. I'm coming to lick off the punters' yeah. heads now. Yeah, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 I'm coming yeah, yeah. to damage you. I'm coming to smash you up you with tunes. Right. See, right? What so, makes you not want to go to a gig? So Jeez. yeah, that same ethos stays with me of yeah. how I play, you get what I'm saying, yeah. and all that, you get what I'm saying, so... But that's why people herald you in such a way, because there's just no way that anybody readily getting into music would ever have them foundations like that. Not, not. I could be wrong, comment below. Yeah, but 2022, I, yeah, no, you know... Yeah, a lot of DJs that have kind of had that same journey, like I've, I've, when I talk to Frost, you know, he's, you know... Yeah, Frost he, is a great used to, um, right. used to have sort of um, things with... Coxon and certain yeah. sound systems yeah. in the area and um, quite a few DJs that are like my age as well have come because mm-hmm. you know if you're my age back then you would have you know the sound would, culture yeah. the sound system culture more than was, people was the thing. so yeah. it will, if you weren't doing sound culture thin sound system then yeah what were you doing? Yeah, what were you you, doing? Yeah, you yeah. was either Teddy Boy yeah. or or a mod <laughs> yeah, yeah. or whatever because or like, punk yeah. rock or whatever because yeah. 
You Jones know what I mean? are very specific at that yeah. time as well. Genre, they? You, there wasn't no mixing into you yeah. know different genres like now the kids them now oh they're into a bit of grime yeah. but they like drum and bass yeah. but they like um they like Afro Afrobeat, yeah. Afro beat and yeah. the, no you stuck to, you stuck in your yeah. lane you you know yeah. what I mean you you into jungle you into jungle you into no not jungle you into reggae you into reggae mm. you get what I'm saying you you mad or whatever and everybody just stayed in their corner so. I mean, drum and bass, jungle, rave, acid, whatever you want to call it, was a real introduction for me for other cultures because, yeah. you know, even when I came to London, you know, the parties that I used to go to were like Saloid and just reggae parties or whatever. Mm. And I'll be amongst just reggae people or lovers rock or whatever. So when the acid house been come and I'm like... What was your first thoughts? Were you like... I'm like, rah, because I'm not used to being in a club with white people, Indian, Asian, all different people. You get what I'm saying? Where, where we go, it's just black people. Mm -hmm, you get what I'm mm -hmm. saying? All of a sudden, we went to this party, me and Frost. Um, there was this sound called Shock Sound System. Um, and they were doing a party, a warehouse party over in Clink Street. And we were just, I don't know why we went there, probably. Cause, you know, we were just like, just up and down on the road, mm. just probably getting up to no good or whatever, yeah, you get what I'm yeah, saying? And yeah. we just end up there. Maybe Gyal was the first thing on our minds. Yeah, missing some, I used to some, some it's not Gyal. Really the first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not really what some, some fresh Gyal in my window or whatever. <laughs> so let's go and have a look. So it wasn't the music, definitely, <laughs> right? Let's get that right. It's either drugs or girls. That's really all it was right, about, right? Yeah. So let's just put it straight, you know yeah. what I mean? We weren't going there for the music, we were going there for any other thing, yeah, right? Yeah. And we went in there and white people and Indian and Chinese and Asians and people looking happy mm. because, you know, I mean, them times I was going to places like Taurus blues parties and Smarlux and stuff like that in South London and, mm. you know, you step on man, you're getting, you know, you're in trouble yeah. or you're looking at somewhere, we are look pun yeah. and whatever. So so no one was actually happy to be there. It was just... <laughs> 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 we were... We were happy, right? <laughs> but that was just how it was. Yeah. So you didn't know nothing else, just you be, know? Be, be vigilant. Yeah, basically. it's how we grew up. We we grew up in that environment, so we didn't know about the anything other than just like, don't look too hard, don't step on my tour, don't yeah, look yeah. on my girl, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Don't spill the drink <laughs> on me, right? <laughs> Right? Are you having a good time? <laughs> stop it. You stop it. But at the same time, it was wicked. You get yeah. what I'm saying? We'd rub down girl and we'd hear music and we'd celebrate the vibe and all that. So it was good. You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, of course. But, but there was rules. Yeah, yeah. And that's all we knew. So we just... And then so going to these parties and like, you right, mate? You're like, what? Oh, what are you touching? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. hold your space because yeah, 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 yeah. you don't... All right, mate. <laughs> Whatever, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, you're not you, want, you, you want some water, mate? Yeah. You want to try some of these? No, no, what? You put something in the water? Where you give me mm. water for? You drug it up or something like mm. that? You, I'm suspicious. Yeah, 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 yeah. So give me water because not, no yeah. one don't give you stuff yeah, 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 yeah. when you go to these reggae dances or What's whatever. It, mind? it was weird, but because like I was open minded, I didn't kind of just like, ah, oh, whatever. We just kind of just, ah, oh, cool, cool, cool. You know what I'm saying? And we was intrigued, like, wah, rah. And, yeah. you know, people want to hug us and all that. Yeah. Hug. Yeah. Hold on a sec. You know what I'm saying? Because don't get too mm. close to me mm. or whatever. Because, mm. you know, we just knew about all in our space and all that. And, like, people be like, oh, man, just talking to us and being nice. And mm. we didn't get it at first. And then, like... We kind of understand the music as well was like washing machine going around. Like your washing machine just going around. Just weird music and all that stuff. And, you know, but we didn't realise that... Ex well, I didn't know nothing about ecstasy and pills at the time. And how that connected with the yeah, music. With, and, and their happiness, <laughs> mostly, yeah. you know what I mean? Because yeah, the ease yeah. was what made people just like fluffy yeah. Yeah. and stuff. But we weren't on them things. We were just smoking weed. Did you ever do Did you ever do ecstasy or anything like that? Not did? back then, no. Yeah. Because we just looked at it as some... Um, yeah. Growing up, we looked at like drugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, yeah. weed was all right and drink, yeah. but... Heroin and yeah, I mean yeah, I've no, never no. even heard of cocaine them times. Do you get what I'm saying? But no. you heard about heroin and people yeah, injecting yeah. themselves and we well, hear and, about them dying. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah and, so news. drugs was always, especially in our community, them kind of things. We would be like, I don't yeah. know, white people drugs yeah, or yeah, whatever, yeah. because you never saw them in our community. Yeah. Our, we, we just didn't 
do none of that yeah. stuff. Or if it did, I never knew about it. You get it's me saying? Genre specific drugs yeah. for heroin. The, yeah. And so when we was like ecstasy, have some mad tins yeah. and then trips. You know, I remember somebody telling me once that um, I don't know if it was true, but you, you take a trip and it makes you feel like you can fly and somebody felt like they could fly one time and they was like in a building and they decided to f go out the window mm -hmm. to fly and kill themselves. Yeah. So that stuck that in my head, that stuck in my head. So when I heard people taking trips, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, you're mad. I Just had, move that stuff away from me. I've heard a story of it, some drug, I don't know what it is, comment below, but there was this drug and apparently, <laughs> A friend of mine, MC Trip, you remember Trip, right? <laughs> <laughs> MC Trip. Um, he was telling me about someone who had a trip where they went. You have to be in a really silent, black, dark-out room, and you you take this drug and you go into this mad thing, but you can't be interrupted. And apparently, someone opened a door and slammed a door while they were tripping, and like three or four of them people forever heard the door slam. Well, there you go. There you so go. It ain't about yeah, that yeah, life. Yeah. Yeah. And then you are, so you had all these weird <coughs> drugs in the earth, what, what I was seeing, I mean, love dubs and, you know, making people happy and horny and stuff. And I was scared. I mean, and, then the, and then you had this thing called M.O. Nitray or yeah. something like that. And just the smell of it alone it was, okay, was yeah. just made me like, yeah. nah, this is not for me. You get what I'm saying? All so, tranquilizers yeah, and all so that I, sort of thing. I things. mean, I stayed away from them things. For as long as I could. <laughs> <laughs> They're all terrible. But I did try. When right? did you start trying them sorts of things, um, Mr. G? I, don't, I think, um, oh, God. Um, I remember once there was a party. There was this guy called um, Raymond. I used to know, and he had, this, he had this dance called World Party. He had a party in World Dance. That's it, World Dance. Uh -huh. And um, he did a big, big rave up north somewhere and um yeah i remember taking my first e there how's that and it just made me just like i had to do my set in an hour and i remember taking the e and it just like made me turn into a little ball and really? i was just like I, I i was scared and i started to like my, pan my like a panic attacks and i hid myself under the stage. Serious, I hid myself under the stage and I didn't know what to do with myself and I was sweating and <laughs> just frightened and my heart was going funny and I was just all over the place and I was just having the worst experience ever in you my life. Uh, uh. you still yeah, DJ? Yeah, I managed to DJ, it wore off, but I just remembered going through a weird, crazy moment yeah, of yeah, yeah. just like, like yeah, 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 turning yeah. into a ball and scared of what was gonna happen to me, my life and my body, and if I was gonna yeah. die or something yeah, like that. Yeah. And so that was my first time, but somehow, I think I'm, I can't fully remember, but I'm guessing I was probably hanging out at some after party with some girls or whatever, and mm. try some of this, make you feel yeah. good, <laughs> you know what I'm Kill I'm me like, a little <laughs> <fella. laughs> and, You know, just, just to kind of get what I wanted. Yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? You're like, yeah. you, you go with me. Like one reason to know what you wanted. <laughs> and it wasn't that tablet. <laughs> But, but um, <laughs> you, you went back again, and and, and I think that's yeah. The, the, and then the, you know, all your friends are doing it. Yeah. you're around people. Everybody's just bigging it up, saying, "Oh, it's brilliant," yeah. and it makes you feel good. And you know, I think probably if you're with a girl and she's just saying, "Come yeah. on, babe, it's really good and stuff," and so you slowly kind of. Yeah. All of a sudden, you have a little nibble. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you have a little it's nibble, do a little yeah. half, yeah. and then. But I, I'm going to be honest, straight up, right. Is this, is, was, is this exclusive? Was, is this yeah, exclusive? this is. I'm gonna be honest, straight up, right? I've never been a uh, hardcore like e mm. take up. Never been. You get what I'm saying? Mm. I've always been scared to take an old one, and yeah. I've always been one of those people like, oh come on, what's, that's not gonna do nothing yeah. because I've always had a little like just yeah. just a nibble, just yeah, yeah. a nibble. Yeah. Is that I, hard to is that hard to control? Because like it must be quite Moorish, isn't it? Oh, you mean? Well, I've never done drugs, right? Yeah, so is, yeah. is half a lot? Is, uh, is well, too much? I don't know, you know, but for me, it's just the, the frightness, fright of doing an old one, yeah. you get what I'm saying? Because I've always had this thing in the back of my head that it's drugs, it's E, yeah. it's a chemical, it's, and and there's consequences yeah. that it can kill you, Will you get what I'm saying? Will constitution work well with... Uh, and so I always it. know that you, it's like Russian ruler. Every time 
I take an E, it's like Russian roulette with your life, you get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And it's I've never been comfortable taking E's, but I think I've been one of those people that have been easily influenced into just like, all right, then whatever, just whatever, yeah. what everyone's doing. Go it. with the flow so kind of thing. Kind of thing, yeah, yeah, instead of just like, no, no, no. So I've kind of just like, all oh, right, then have a little nibble, just, just to keep everyone quiet. Wait, no, I'll have a little of, nibble. Only live once kind of way. Yeah, yeah and, but I've never, I've never been the one kind of like, Saturday night, right, let's, let's get, let's get on e- it. Yeah. yeah, or, you know, before we go out, get yeah, it, yeah. get it. No, nah, never been that. But if, if I'm out mm. and it comes my way, yeah, bro, whatever, you know, mm. like if you ask some of my friends them as well, mm-hmm. they'll be like, oh, let's, you know, when you go back to brands, you're going to find loads of ease because people always give me stuff, <laughs> right? And I say, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I just take it home and leave it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even think about it. Right, I just leave it there. And then all of a sudden I'm like, right, it's like a fucking chemist in here. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's like a big power. But because I would never, ever... I so would just... you're not going to disclose where you live right now, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you get a couple of knock oh, on the yeah. door. <laughs> so you ask Frost and all them things, they used to always laugh yeah. like, boy, Brown's always got a little alfie or a little yeah. couple of E's and that's stuff. That's incredible, though. I had to people... throw them away because people be like, how long have you had that year? Seven years, five years? This is the that's problem thing. That's is... gone off yeah. now, you get what I'm saying? But I didn't know that. I was just like, oh, you know what? I think there's some E's. Like, what would happen is like, sometimes I might have an after party at my yard and then... Some people, are, uh, drugs. I was like, you know what? I think I got some in some drawer upstairs yeah, that yeah, from yeah, about yeah. three years ago or something like yeah, that. I've been yeah. looking about. Yeah, here's one here, and this one's from about four years ago, and this one's from this one. And they'll be like, these are no good now. But really? I, I, I so they're not like a fine wine where they just get better. I don't. I wouldn't know I because know. you get what I'm saying. So I was just keep them just yeah. because. I like to hoard stuff. Yeah, you get yeah, what I'm no, saying, feel, you know? I yeah. No, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah, I'm a hoarder. Yeah, yeah. Even my girl says like, oh, that's not with drugs, but. You're always keeping all this rubbish in the house yeah. because I hate throwing away things yeah, and I've got yeah. things in my yard from that I never use or wear or whatever for really? 30, 40 years. What you got then? Give huh? me give me an example of something that is just rare, you know, rare that you've got in your house that, that would be sitting alongside, I don't know, a little ra- a pack of MDMA or something. What have you, what have you, what have you, what have you got? Well, pull this, pull it, me no MDMA, right? <laughs> so what have you got in your... Well, tell me, you know, because this is some insightful no, stuff. What have you I'm got that's like just, rare? I just... Flyers? Mixtapes. Oh, of course, I got all. I got all them. I got you know. I mean, got all my rec- records from back in the day. Seven inches, yeah. reggae records, still. Um, yeah, flyers, clothes from way back in the day. That. Really? Yeah, I just I just hoard stuff. I'm, I'm one of them people. Maybe because. I've always had it hard coming up, yeah. so throwing away things. It's a lot in it. Yeah. It's like no, it's still good. But yeah. do you wear it? No. So why are you keeping it? Because it's still good. You get what I'm saying? And yeah, 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 my yeah. girls always have an argument because we're always complaining about space in the place. And mm. like, like there's no space in the yard and trying to find more room. And she's like, Throw. I'm like, no, no. But I've never ever wore it or I never mm. will wear it. But it's just, nothing's wrong with it. It's mm. new. Yeah. Why throw it away? You get mm. what I'm saying? I'm so, I hoard stuff, you know what I mean? The, I don't know whether, you know, boy or girl relationship wise, the, the, the other half is ever... Ever quite She's just as bad as well because <laughs> she loves loads of clothes that she never wears as well. And I'm like, get rid of all that stuff first. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Here's so, the rules. You yeah, set the rules. Yeah, We're yeah, doing yeah. these. We'll start with you first. Give me a, give me a, uh, give me something that no one would know about Brian G that he has because we know Nicky Black Markets. He's into the, you know, watching trains go by. He's into the choo-choo's and stuff. He likes, he likes going to train rallies and stuff like that. What, <laughs> what is a Brian G? Closet passion that no one else Closet would know. Passion. Yeah. Wow. Come on, something that is just like way out there and you're just like, hey, I don't think I've ever expressed a, a, a like for that. But you love it. Um, uh, closet passion. Wow. Um, no, I think, every, I think you know, everyone knows what I you know, Like I said, everybody, I'm an open book. Yeah. And so um, I, have to, let me think of the, I have to think of that, that one because um, I kind of... Uh, because it could be quite habitual. You might be into something that actually you never really thought of. You actually really dig it. Uh, you know, it could be like, oh yeah, I love making this kind of recipe, or I love this kind of perfume, or you know, I got, I, I quite like the idea of fishing or shit like that. You know what I mean? It's just random stuff that people really get into, isn't it? Right. Um... You've probably got a high, high, high end collection of Hermes belts or something. You know, you're just like, okay, do you um... know what I'm saying? Um. What do I love? 
At the moment, I love Goring Brother hats. <laughs> do you? You're Goring yeah. Brother hat man. Yeah. yeah. Do you go through phases of liking different clothes? Yeah, of that? course I do, man. You get what I'm saying? I mean, there was a time when I used to just wear uh, Morris Malone. Mm. and then Oh, was... my God, Morris Malone. Oh, geez. Yeah, yeah of course. Just, and you know what I mean? So we all go through um, brands and stuff that we just can't stop rocking. You get what I'm saying? Mm. And I remember, like, as soon as me and Frost used to go to New York and all that, like, Frost would be just, like, all on the... Um, Gucci, Ralph Lauren, yeah, or all, the, yeah, all yeah. the designer. I'll be like, take me down to Brooklyn, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to Carl Kanai and things like Carl that. Like, yeah, and and some like, Morris figure. Malone and yeah, yeah, some, yeah, all some street stuff and yeah, all that yeah. shit. You get what I'm saying? Fubu and and, and, and yeah, that, yeah. And, that, and that makes me feel comfortable. You get what I'm saying? You do all them stuff. You got all the Yeah, the yeah. And um, we used to do like, back in the day, about 20 years ago now, we used to um, play in Germany and um, we used to play the regular and the promoter was sponsored by Saab Paul and Benny Miles. Yeah. Sir Benny cool. Miles. Oh my God, yeah, cool. And so like every time, you know, we used to just go there, we'd be coming back with boxes and Mad. boxes of merchandise from Benny Miles and South Pole and loads of it is still in my yard now and I would never wear some of that stuff yeah, now, yeah, but yeah. that's some of the stuff my girls tell me to get rid of, you get what I'm saying? That. But I'm like, you know what? That's a brand new Benny Miles jacket. Yeah, 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 <laughs> I'm not going to throw that away, you get but what I'm back saying? Back in the day, back in the day, and I can only remember this as, 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 as adoptees because my genre was definitely more hip hop orientated you know I'd always flit into like hardcore mixtapes you know uh -huh. SS and you know Rat Pack and you know the Groove Rider and that you know see them all fly Shy FX yourself but um the adaptation adaptation of uh Scott jackets and Dready jackets and um those kind of naff naff rave affiliated clothing suddenly came to the surface do you remember these brands they yeah, were well, very... you talking like um with the the MA1 jackets yeah, and yeah, stuff MA1 like that. Things like that. Which yeah, were, yeah. Which were really quite a British take on yeah. th that kind of clothing culture, wasn't it? For, yeah. for rave. Yeah, I mean, that was probably the early start of where we could see the branding of, of you know what I mean? And and merchandise taking off and people kind of rocking the merchandise. I think yeah. World Dance and Cool FM. Yes. You know what I mean? And then, and then Ministry of Sound. And, and then Lecky kind of like. Yeah. Really, like, um, took it to that next it's level, just like you know, what I mean, making it a, a street brand and a street Big culture. Time. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was actually the he. All those things were pretty much like prototypes, weren't they? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, mm. he just took the whole thing yeah. as somebody that represented within hip hop and jungle, and it kind of moved it on, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Big up Lecky, man, yeah, because you know, he had a good vision back then, man. Yeah. Still does. Still yeah. a man of many visions. Um. What do you reckon the future is for you, Brian? What do you, how, how, how's it? Actually, wait a minute. Before we go into that, movement. Let's get into movement. Tell oh. me about talk. Let's talk movement. Movement. Oh, yeah. wow. Well, just you about like, Talk to me about movement. 15 years every Thursday night in the heart of the Western was just like the craziest, some of the craziest times we've had. Um, you know, it was beautiful moments, man, doing that night Incredible. at Bar Rumba. <gasps> and, um, the amount of times I went there. <laughs> You know, as a young man, yeah, you know, because um, it was at a time as well, just before like drum and bass and the music kind of got to that next level of where it would have been difficult to get artists, management, yeah. agencies, more strong, whatever. You had agencies and stuff like that, but it was just before kind of like it got more branding and more yeah. whatever. So. And then came the compilations. Yeah, so back like then, or... you know, you could get everybody for 250 to come down to the club, 250 yeah, quid. In a midweek. Yeah, but everybody. But now, you, you know what I mean? You know, things are different now. Mm. Artists are all branded. They've got the agents, managements, and and they've got label nights, and you got all this kind of thing, whereas, oh, the, um, I'm exclusive to this club, so I can't do no other clubs in London mm. and all this all these things. Whereas none of that went on before. You get what I'm saying? Mm. You're playing that like Fabric Friday night. You can still play at Bar Room on Thursday night. You mm. get what I'm saying? Mm -mm. And no one gave a toss. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So those were great times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now it's all just like exclusivity now and stuff. So how do you feel about I don't about think that? you could do you could do something like that anymore. I don't really like it. I, I could understand it. When someone, because what's happened is the fees have gone up. So when you're paying more, then you, the risk are higher. You get what I'm saying? Whereas before, maybe, you know, you weren't paying so much. So you didn't mind because mm. you know that it, you didn't have to, you know, 
go hell and high to, to mm. pay the artists. But now when artists are asking you for three grand or two grand or whatever for a show, mm. you can't make them play mm. somewhere the week before or whatever. You need that kind of... A, so I can understand it. So, but... You know what I mean? It's fucking things up. Though. Yeah, because you know that that night gave gave people the chance to, to see everybody. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Everybody. It was just like Goldie, mm. whoever you wanted, mm. you would see them there. Ronnie size. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're every all there. They're yeah, all there. every Thursday night, and you you know you mixed with everybody in the crowd, and you had your rude boys, you had your students, you had your your office workers. You had your tourists, you had your, you had your celebrities, <laughs> yeah. you had your, your, just everybody mixed into this melting pot of, you get what I'm saying? And it's yeah. just like, wow, you get what I'm saying? Where you, you had junglers, liquid, mm. jump pop. There wasn't that like, yeah. oh, oh, I'm not going this week because it's jump pop, or I'm not going this week because. People went because of the club, the vibe, not because of oh, who's playing That's or right. whatever. You, 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 you don't even, even need to know. fly. You don't even need to fly. You just go straight there. Bar you just, rumba. Yeah. And you just go there and you know that you was going to get some good energy and yeah. stuff. So, um, yeah, that was a great night we had there, you know what I mean? And um, I don't think you could do those things again. But, yeah, it was a brilliant night, man. Movement, um, you know, it kind of where the Brazilian thing started off as well. Yeah, it really was, man. So that opened up the door for the whole of the Latin world as well. And that for, was yeah, a charge. So that, that, you know what I mean? the, that blew the yeah, doors yeah. off. Because, like, you know, people that didn't know about drum and bass all of a sudden got into drum and bass because... It was, you know, Brazil influenced and you had the samples and stuff and all that. So it was a great time, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Really good time. And um, yeah, some of the best times of my life just being there every Thursday. It was a joy to play there, be the resident. And um, at the time, as, as I said to you earlier on, you don't even realise what you're doing at that time because you're just thinking about the next week and the next week and you're just on this journey, this mm -hmm. journey looking forward. But when I look back on it now, I wish I could just press pause serious just, just press pause and just like you know what i mean enjoy it a bit more because you know i enjoyed it but you just always just thinking about next week or whatever and you know, you know, no i'm lying i did enjoy it i had, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had yeah. loads of fun down there let's man. check <laughs> let's check the cupboards of the drawers of your of your apartment fact, and see how people much are you watching this but thinking what is he on about ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, oh something. we used to see you every bloody yeah. thursday night Living it up, yeah, uh, but you you only live it once. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. The... I mean, we were we were living the life there, mm. and um, yeah, we weren't we weren't hiding it either. You get mm. what I'm saying? You know, that's when the champagnes came. Mm. Out. That's right. That's when the champagnes and the caviar and everything came out, and we had the celebrities, and you know, we had people like um, boxers. What's that little boxer name? Um, oh, the Indian Prince Nassim. Prince Nassim. Yeah. All these like celebrities just turning up Mind because. Body. You know, sugar sugar cubes and sugar mm. what the girls called sugar cubes. Oh, sugar babes. Sugar babes yeah. and Bjork and because drum and bass was this core cool thing, you get what I'm saying? Goldie had just signed with London, Ronnie Side had just signed with um uh, Talking Lad yes. um, you know, and so and Adam F was doing stuff and so you had all these like big artists working with majors mm. and so they there was a lot of money and you know you had people like, I remember one week Todd Terry turned up at the club because he made a drum and bass track wow. um, called Total Total Blackout. And wow. Everybody was like, Todd Terry. And so He's I the think, nicest dude, right? He's yes, and yes. So, so I think so, so. I think to kind of just like give the track some cred and give himself some cred for somebody making drum and bass that was not in drum and bass. Mm. They invited him to come and play at Bar Rumba. How did it go? Wicked, man. The man oh, rolled man. it out and stuff. And because did. the tune was hot as well. And everybody, so that was, you know, Todd Terry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was like, bro, Todd Terry, I'm, I'm coming playing after Todd Terry tonight. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm thinking, can you feel it? I remember that record on Champion when I was, you know what I mean, coming through and can you feel it? And now I'm playing with him. Oh, man. And so this, this, these, you know, you had all these celebrities and artists turning up and, and, um, TV soap operas. I remember people from oh, yeah. that. There's this channel for soap. Brookside, not Brookside. Hollyoaks. Hollyoaks. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I know so much? Hollyoaks. <laughs> they all turned up there. I remember that's the girl from Hollyoaks, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so they yeah. all. You know, drum and bass was this Popping. cool yeah. place to kind of like. You know what I mean? And you were in the episode. I mean, there was only you and Blue Note. 
the, the bar yeah, 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 were yeah, really yeah. And, and yeah, and then you had Swerve, yeah, on, Swerve a, yes. on a Wednesday as yes. well. So and oh, that man. was the beauty of it because I think those were those were so important because mm. you know, even people even now I'm saying to my labor manager, I wanna find another because we'll over the again. last two years we've been doing like label nights, but we've been doing them in real big venues. Mm. Which is good, but I'm like, you know what? I want to take it back to the small venues again. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So maybe do more, and because with the big venues, you can only do like about two a year because it's so big. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta take time to promote it and whatever. But with the small <coughs> venues, you can do like you every to, two man. months, every two months, yeah. and that's where you get the real energy, yeah. the real vibe. That that's when you can like, break. When, actually, I saw your hoot nanny. That's which, right. Yeah, that was wicked. That the, was a wicked. Yeah, night. that's what you're yeah. saying. You on them underground vibes. Like five to a thousand thousand capacity. Yeah. That's when you can play music and you can get a vibe going and all that. So um, that's where I'm trying to go back as well. I'm really looking for like yeah. um somewhere where we can have a little residency and just make the music grow. You know what I mean? Road test things. Yeah. Because Incubation. It's, it's hard to test out music at Fabric or Steelyard or yeah. Inkworks or whatever yeah. these places because I think DJs are so under pressure yeah. to just play the hits or the big tunes because yeah. you got like a couple thousand people standing up in yeah. front of you. Just go to the standard show. set just in case. You so, don't want it going uh, wrong. I don't want to, you know what I mean? Whereas if you're in a small little club now, yeah. you can just kind of, you know what I mean? So, Playing to an audience of a few right. that, so, that tastemakers. Uh, yeah. And you want to build basically, your own basically, basically, yeah. Recording yeah. Movement because that's what we're about. You get yeah. what I'm saying? So we need to kind of like bring that to the clubs as, as well. And that was the beauty of movement, you know? pure fresh tunes and all that but we could break them yeah. down there you get what i'm saying and liquid jump up whatever star we just it all got smashed down there yeah. you get what i'm saying and like and 15 years sounds like a long time but when you're doing a club it ain't a long time at all before you know it that... i know when <laughs> i mean when we finished and someone said we've been doing it for 15 years i was like wow, wow. 15 <laughs> years man and yeah man mm. I'd, I'd love to do it again man mm. to even go back to bar rumba mm. and just like thursday nights and just let's oh, let's, let's do it Bring again it but back. you know what i always think it's easy to say now but it's different times and every every era you can't bring that forward anymore because the people the time the music was all important to mm. how things were then mm. and i think the music is different now yeah. the new generation Think different, you get what I'm yeah. saying? It's a different way of thinking now. And you kind of got to go with the flow. I mean, you've got the yeah. new podcast, you've got the podcast that you've been doing for a while, and that comes out free, free every month. Yeah, so. yeah, every month I do the podcast, B podcast. It started from Ministry of Sound. I was doing a, um, a show on Ministry of Sound, and then they, they stopped the, the drum and bass show on Ministry. And so I decided to go, um, carry on doing a mix, mm. and then we just call it the B podcast instead of the Ministry of Sound. And, it's just, and been, it it's just been going since. Every and, um, month, yeah. Yeah, and you know, sometimes I do like when lockdown was going on, you know, people there was a hunger for more. Mm. Everybody was like, Oh, can you do it twice a month or whatever? So I used to do what you're doing mm. and I was talking to artists from the label mm. and stuff, you get what I'm saying, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And that was fun and all that. So maybe I need to bring that back as well. So is it see that you know this is the best thing about about having conversations like this is because it sparks the it sparks the passion of the things that you miss in your own genre that makes mm. you think, well hold on, it's not there. And I missed that. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. We used to do that. We should do that, yeah, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's and, great. Them are, and them things are important to kind of just keep that energy going, you get what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, big time. Well, on that note, it's been a pleasure having you on, my Yeah, brother. man, it's been fun, man. Yeah. I, you know what I mean? I wasn't sure what, you know, what, what was to expect. Mm -hmm. You just said, come down and, um, you know, the questions have been different. We've talked different. Yeah. Um, it's not have they been, been different? Very different. Yeah. It's not been about wow. just like, you know what I mean? How did B start? Mm -hmm. Where did you, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And the same questions. A lot of those things are important, but you've kind of just like brought things, to, yeah, you took a different <laughs> angle on it, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, up, man. Going, my pleasure. Thank you so much for passing through. Yeah, I do it over here. People kill a kettle podcast. I like it was out of fashion. Yeah, for more information, you know where to go. Vrecordings.com. Yeah, vrecordings.com, man. Yes, sir. And Same if you want to follow me on Twitter, V Forever, and Instagram, DJ Brian G, Facebook, DJ Brian G. Yeah, as if you didn't know already, all right? Listen, we're out, man. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. We're not doing it for our health. Crime don't pay, but neither do they. Remember that, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. Big up, Brian. Yeah, man. Safe, yeah? Big Peace. up, killer. Peace. All right. Yeah. Yeah.